What's up guys? So some of you might have seen before Parks and Recreation, the show, and if you have, I'm sure you know who DJ Roomba is. What is that? Oh, I strapped an MP3 player to one of those floor cleaning robots. Call him DJ Roomba. Little guy cruises around and plays music. What's hot, DJ Roomba? Games, games, DJ Roomba, turn it up! So, if you do know who DJ Roomba is, you're gonna be really excited about this because today we are going to make a DJ Roomba. Um, we're, be, we're gonna be using this um, Roomba imitation, um, still works the same. Um, we're gonna be using these speakers and we're gonna be attaching this to this. Now, here's the basic plan. Uh, we, are, we want it to fit our robot and we want it to be able to fit most robots, right? Um, because it's not only me that is gonna enjoy this awesome piece. So we want it to be adjustable, we want it to be removable, and we want it to be versatile. So um, what I came up with is this. It's gonna be a set of uh, clamps, for a better word, for lack of a better word, and we're gonna have two on the back here, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see very well. It's probably gonna be better explained like this. As you can see here, we're gonna have two clamps that are gonna go on this side, back here and here, and then we need to hold on to the front, but this bumper is you know, a sensor, so we can't hold on to that, but thankfully, we have this hold. So one is gonna go like here, two pull, one pushes, and then on the center, they're all going to be connected by a threaded rod and in that hub we're going to put our speaker like that. We're going to take advantage that these speakers have a threaded one quarter inch hole that is the same size as a, any tripod mount. So that means that in the end we'll be able to mount this speaker, any other speaker that have a tripod mount which I've encountered several and or your camera. So you're gonna have a DJ Roomba or a photographer Roomba or any kind of Roomba you want. <laughs> now, let's get to designing the piece. The first piece that we're gonna design is this one, the pivoting axis. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start a sketch, all right? Um, we're gonna start a sketch and we're gonna do a, a square but since we want to keep the center, we're gonna we're gonna select the um, rectangle from center, and we want the sides to be well twenty one by twenty one millimeters. Okay, perfect. Now we have that. Next, we're gonna want to make the whole the circle for the hole to the um, for the threaded rod, right? So shortcut C will give us a circle. Right, and the diameter of that circle we're gonna make it to be 8.6. And now we're gonna make another circle which is going to be for the groove for the washer that we're gonna use. So that's going to be 18.9. Okay, so let's go, let's stop the sketch. Now we can select this, extrude, right, E, and we're going to extrude it 10 millimeters, perfect. So the threaded rod is going to fit in here and we're going to want to make the, the, the groove or the, the part where the washer fits in, so we're going to select this and we're going to extrude it as well, and we're going to extrude it, let's do 3 millimeters, all right. So now we have that hole there, all right? Now we're going to want to uh, place these the the axes that are going to go into into our clamps, right? So what we're going to do is, if we want to center things in like a rectangular plane, 
we can go ahead and start a new sketch, right? We're going to want it on this plane, on this side of the, of the square. And then we can make a line, L for line. And then we're going to make an X here, right? Now we can select these two lines since we're not actually going to build anything from them and turn them into construction lines. So this dot here, right here is the center. So we're going to make another circle, right, C, and then we're going to make it six millimeters wide, right, and now we have that circle stop sketch. Actually, let's make it seven millimeters. Perfect. Okay, so let's stop the sketch. Now what we can do is um, extrude it. So let's select this, extrude for six millimeters. Okay, perfect. We don't need these sketches anymore. All right, so now that we, that we have this, we are going to mirror this on this side, right? Because why would we have to build it all over again? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create mirror Right, we're gonna select the object that we want to mirror, then we're gonna select the plane, and then if you as you can see, we can't really select the origin plane. So what we're gonna do is hold down the normal click button, and then that's gonna give us the option to go deep deeper. So this is the plane that we want. And now there we go. Now we have two. Now we want this to give, give us a little bit of clearing and um, you know save ourselves a little bit of material and make it a little nicer to the touch so what we're gonna do is we are going to fill it everything so let's select all these edges and now fill it which is an F but let me show you here in the map and So now we have our pivot. Um, let's uh, take all these bodies, well, let's take this body and make it into a component so that we can use it as a joint and to make more complex things later. So create components from bodies. And now we have one component, as you can see here, right? Great. So now let's save it. Save to the DJ Roomba project and let's go. Now, this is the two axis pivot that is going to go into the um, central hub, and this one's going to allow you to move the, uh, the rod in two different axes, right? And so that you can adjust it more easily. So, I'm just, I already did it, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to go do a quick walkthrough of how I did it, right? So, basically, we start the same. Right, we start with a sketch, and this one, this one's gonna have a nut that's gonna go in there, but we don't want, we don't, we don't really need to adjust that that easily, so it doesn't have to move around. So, what what happens is we we extrude it, and the nut is gonna be stuck in there, right? And that way, we, it it doesn't move, and it can it can pivot more e around more easily. So, now that we have that, um, we make the side sketch. That just like we did before, we make the body, right? Uh, we mirrored it. Here you can see that we mirrored it. And then we made this into a component. This is what this means. Uh, then we went back to the sketches um, to make this uh, offset, right? So we use the offset tool. Basically what you can do is Click here on offset and um, select a line like this, and um, you can you can make a line that's offset by an X amount. I'll show you that at some other point. Let's just do this real quick. And then I extruded it, made the new body. Then we made the cut. This is the cut, right? So if we had this component, you can see that now we have these little holes. Then we offset this face. So when you want something to be a joint you need to 
give it some tolerance. And I found that with FDM, the best tolerance that I can do is to have a point to um, millimeter space between the things that you want to move and that means that I need 0.2 in every single side of this circle which means I needed to offset this plane by 0.4 millimeters so that's what I did there then we make a new pivot axis here mirror it make this into a component again then I added I made a joint so basically this is what this is what a joint means. We're telling the software that we want that how we want these two components to interact. So as you can see, this is how that's going to pivot, right? But now now that we see that it's pivoting, we can see that it's kind of almost touching the edge, right? And there's going to be a little bit of wobble here. So in order to make that ease run more easily. Um, I added some fillets on these edges and that way it's going to be easier to separate it from the print and the um, center piece is going to revolve without touching any edges. See? Free space. Well, I guess I'll show you how to do the, the joint. So basically, now that we've built it in the same spot, we can do this. We're going to assemble, create a create joint as built right and we're going to select what we want the components right we want this component we want it on this component uh, yeah sure and then we want to select the type of joint that we want we want a revolute joint select the surface and then that's how it's going to go and then you would click ok to save it but since i already have one i don't need another one all right so that's it for making pivots um Thank you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one where I'm going to show you how to make one of the clamps. And uh, yeah. Thanks. If you like this or any of my other videos, please check out my GoFundMe campaign. All the proceeds go towards my education. You can click here for that. Or if you want, you can do it through PayPal in the description below. Speaking of that, don't forget to check out the description below for relevant links and important details. While you're down there, make sure to leave me all your comments, questions, or suggestions so I can keep making better content for you. Finally, make sure you click that thumbs up and share it with anybody that you think would be interested. And subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can click over here for other videos and playlists that you might find interesting. See you next time.